Let me show you some more advanced split toning editing in Lightroom while we turn this image into this. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw files. You can find a link to them in the description of this video. And now let's begin. Okay, here we have our base image and because this is a super contrasty scene with lots of highlights in the sky against some very deep shadows, we first of course want to merge an HDR image in order to be able to restore this image in a nice way. So select all five images down below in the film strip, right click, go to photo merge and choose HDR. We don't need to change much here, just make sure auto align is selected and now let's hit the merge button. And Lightroom will create this new file for us on which we can now work on. As always, before we get to the more interesting stuff, we need to set up the base image in order to get a better idea of how this image will look like. So let's open up the basic panel and I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape right away because I know I want this image to be well saturated and this profile will give us some more base saturation. Then I'm going to bring up the exposure quite a lot just to see what we have in those darker areas. I think that's a bit too much. I want to go with something like this where we do have some subtle details in those very dark spots. But looking at the sky, you can see it's kind of blown out at this point. So to fix that, we are going to bring down the highlights. And this is why we are using an HDR image, because otherwise this image would look ugly really, really fast. But thanks to the higher dynamic range, we do have a lot of room to play with all these sliders. We can also bring up the shadows to get out more details from the darker areas. This is really, really important here. Otherwise this image just looks boring. For the same effect, I'm going to bring up the blacks slider just a little bit. Right around here looks nice. And thanks to these simple basic adjustments, we do have a much better looking image with a much better exposure. We can actually see this image is leaning a little bit to the right. I want to fix that using the crop tool, just tilting it a little further to the left side. And this is looking much, much better. Okay. Now, another thing we can see thanks to the adjusted exposure is the white balance is off. We can see some really heavy blue tones in the sky and this does not really feel like a sunset image. So I want to change that by bringing up the white balance temperature. Right around here looks great to me. I also want to bring up the tint because I have a feeling there is some green color cast as well. So I want to reduce that by very slightly raising the tint as well. This is looking great. Then let's go through the present step real quick. I want to make this image sharper by bringing up the texture and I'm going to add a subtle glow effect on top of this image by bringing down the clarity a notch and the dehaze as well. Just like this should be enough, but looks much better. Also, I want to bring up the vibrance for some more saturation. Wonderful. So there we have our image after the basic adjustments. We can take a look at before real quick and you can see a huge difference thanks to the adjusted exposure and the white balance. Still, there are a few areas we want to target locally and of course we are going to do that with masking. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel and right away I want to start work on the sky. I'm using a color range mask to target the blue part of the sky behind the clouds right here. With this mask, I want to make the blue parts darker without affecting the rest of the sky. Still, there is a bit too much selected, so I'm going to say subtract linear gradient, taking away a part from the bottom here. And with the mask created, all I'm doing now is to bring down the exposure, adding more contrast between the blue of the sky and the clouds. I'm going to further work on this effect using a linear gradient on a very tiny area right on top here. And I'm going to simply pull up the contrast, further making the clouds pop. Okay, I do think I want to add one more linear gradient right on top like this. Here, let's further bring up the contrast just a bit. I want to work on this effect even further by bringing down the blacks. Just make sure we don't underexpose by accident here but that's looking good. Because we have adjusted the contrast very heavily in this area, this will also have an effect on the colors. So I don't really want to have these saturated colors up here. 
that's a reason for me to bring down the saturation slider just to counter these contrast adjustments we did before. All right, now let's also work on the center part. I'm using a radial gradient to cover pretty much all of the center here. And what I want to do with this area is I want to make it brighter. I'm going to increase the shadows for that. And I'm also going to increase the blacks very slightly. This will not only make the darkest areas brighter, this will kind of reduce the contrast and in turn, this will give this area in particular a more dreamy effect on top, which I think fits the scene quite well. Then let me also bring down the dehaze to make this effect even stronger. But again, I'm just using tiny amounts here to not overdo it. All right, then I'm going to use another radial gradient for the reflection right here in the water. And in here, I just want to give the water surface more punch. And I'm usually doing that by bringing up the clarity, which again works great in this case. Wonderful. Uh, let's see. I want to further work on the glow effect. I'm using a radial gradient just right here over the brightest parts of the image. I'm also going to rotate it to kind of fit the shape of that hill. And I'm going to place it somewhere around here. In this radial gradient, I'm going to bring up the blacks. And this will create some kind of light spill effect, further improving the glow. I'm also going to bring down the dehaze quite heavily. And we can play around with the white balance temperature, giving this area some more warmth by raising it. All right, that's looking good. Then one more thing I want to do, I want to use another color range mask. And with that color range mask, I want to target the green tones of this image right here. This is a pretty good selection, but we do have some things selected in the sky, which I don't want. So I'm going to say subtract and let's choose select sky. All right, so what I want to do with this mask is I want to make the green tones of the image look a little warmer because right now they do have a very subtle blue color cast. So let's make use of the white balance temperature once more and bring it up. And just like that, we can fix the green tones of the foreground. Wonderful. And here we have it, the image after the masking adjustments. So let's compare to before after the basic adjustments to now with the masking applied. Looking much, much better contrast wise, but the colors are still kind of strange. So now let's do some color grading. And that's where I had some real problems with this image. Let's start in the color mixer. And I want to go right into the hue tab. So the problem for me with this image is the colors were all over the place. We have green tones in the landscape in the foreground, we have some heavy blue tones in the sky, but we also have these warmer orange and yellow tones. And using the color mixer and the split toning, I want to bring the colors more in line, giving this whole image a more stylized color look. So I'm starting this right in the color mixer with the hue. I'm going to bring down the green hue, and this will turn the greens of the foreground more into a yellow color tone, and instantly it becomes way more balanced. I'm also going to bring down the yellow hue, just not as much. This will also have an effect on the sky, which I really like, making the clouds look more orange. And for the same effect, I'm going to bring down the orange hue. All right, that's looking great. Now I do think I want to adjust the red hue, bringing it up. Let's see what this does. I think this looks much better. Now let's also head into the saturation panel. I want to bring up the warmer tones to make them pop a little. So let's raise red. Let's also raise orange. Let's raise yellow. Actually, let's bring down yellow. Otherwise, this might be a bit too much with all these saturated warmer tones. I think this is looking much, much better. I'm not going to touch the green tones. However, what I want to do is I want to head into the luminance tab and here I want to work on the blue part of the sky again by bringing down the blue luminance, giving the sky just a bit more contrast this way. Perfect. Then let's open up the color grading. And for this image, I actually will make use of every single slider there is in the split toning panel. Let's start with something simple with the highlights. Obviously, for this image, we already have some warm highlights and we want to improve on that. So that's the reason for me to set up the hue in such way. I'm going to choose a very warm color tone. 
Let's go right here. I'm looking for something that fits the highlights of the image already. Then I'm going to push the saturation a lot. And instantly you can see a completely changed image with this heavy split toning effect added on top. Usually I'm just going with hue and saturation for the split toning adjustments. However, this time I also want to change up the luminance slider right here, which just controls the luminance of highlights, midtones and shadows. What this means is I'm going to bring down the luminance for the highlights. And in other words, I'm just making the highlights a little bit darker this way. And what I want to achieve by doing this is to give this image some more mood, making it look a bit darker overall. Let's go into the midtones. Here we could choose between a cold color tone for more color contrast or a warmer color tone for a more heavy sunrise sunset effect. I choose to go with a warmer tone. So let's set up the hue. Right around here looks great to me. Again, I'm going to bring up the saturation this time. However, with the midtones, I'm never going too crazy. Just want to raise them a little bit like this. Wonderful. That should be enough. And again, I'm bringing down the luminance slider. Of course, in this case, I will make the midtones of the image darker by doing this. Okay, this is looking great. Now for the shadows. With the shadows, we want to add some more color contrast. That means we have added warmth with the midtones and the highlights. Now we want to add a cold color tone coming with the shadows. So let's set up the hue. I'm going with a cold color tone right around here. And I'm only going to be using a tiny amount of saturation. Let's raise it until we can almost not see in this effect again, but right around here looks good. And for the shadows luminance, I actually want to raise it a bit, reducing the overall contrast and further improving that glow, that glowing soft effect we have established before. This is looking great. Now we have worked on the highlights, the midtones and the shadows. Now let's also target the image globally with this color wheel right here. And globally, I want to set up the mood to something warmer. So I'm going with a warm hue again. And let's gently bring up the saturation. Done. Okay, nice. Now there's one more thing we can do in the split toning section, and that is to make use of blending and balance. Blending will actually make the split toning effect stronger or it will lessen it depending in which direction we are going. I want to make it stronger. So I'm going to bring up the blending slider and this will intensify the split toning. So something like this looks pretty good to me. Then for the balance, if you bring up the balance to the right side, this will emphasize the highlights. If you bring it down to the left side, it will emphasize the shadows and the darker areas of the image. I actually want to bring it down very, very slightly and making the colder side of the image just a little bit stronger. So just around here looks great to me. And that's it for the split toning. Let me turn off these settings to see the difference from before with some very chaotic colors in this image to after with a very stylized color theme. Looks so much better and was really, really simple to do. Now, Let's finalize the color grading in the calibration tab. And all that I'm doing here is to bring down the blue primary hue, just making these warmer red tones a little more intense. I'm also going to bring up the blue primary saturation quite a bit. I really love how this is looking. All right. And finally, of course, the sharpening in the details tab. I'm going to bring down the radius. I'm going to increase the details. I'm going to add masking while holding down the Alt key and let's increase the amount of sharpening just like this. Perfect. And that's the image after the Lightroom adjustments. Now I'm going to clean up the shot in Photoshop. Since my computer is already struggling again with the RAM usage, I'm going to stop this video at that point because I'm afraid it might crash anytime soon. So I hope this video was interesting. And if you have any questions left or if you want to add anything, Feel free to write a comment and thank you so much for watching this video.